demons only exist if you believe in them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, I, I, I think I understand why you would say that, but, but for someone who's never heard of Seth or skeptical about the legitimacy of channeling, does that make Seth not exist? Well, so you're, so you're thinking of like Seth and demons is like kind of being on the same level or kind of like of the same, kind of like the same cloth, like the same kind of like, like they're their own like entities. Well, but also kind of, like, let's say somebody from, um, somebody from Peru has never heard of an Eskimo. Does that mean that Eskimos don't exist? Um, no, that would definitely not mean that Eskimos don't exist. Because I, I don't think an Eskimo existing up, you know, one that does live in, you know, <laughs> uh, up, up north is, would not be a projection of that, that person's mind. I mean, maybe how they imagined them to be would, would be, but I think the main point when it comes to, like, the way in which we approach these subjects, like, like demons and evil and entities and spirits this whole realm that we're just like highly subject to that are out and trying to get us and try to convert us to the dark side you know Mm. to be you know uh uh with the devil being you know the um the mob boss okay you know that kind of that 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 whole thing like we are like powerful enough to 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 give birth to um, those kind of projections and to be subject to them. So, so it's not that it's not that the the entities don't exist; it's that their nature being evil is the projection. Right, right, and it requires our it requires like a co co creation. It requires like a co experience, you know. And so, right there, there might be something that is like a consciousness that is, I mean, maybe demonic, but it just doesn't, you know, it, it, it it seems more of like a, like a, um, more of like a, like a cartoon, (laughs) Uh, you know, like just that, that whole system is more like cartoon, like, and more of like a kid's story to try to describe like why bad things happen and why people think that they're like subject to all these kind of things. You know, oh, okay. it, it, it doesn't take in to, to account the fact that, 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 that our experience is a projection of our own mind. It's, it, it still is coming from that old reality model where we're alone and we're afraid in a world that we never made. I mean, that Alan Watts oftentimes will, will say that because that right. is one of the base reality models that most of us are facing on a regular basis. We think we're separate and there's this thing that's outside of us that's trying to get us. And, you know, if you're come, if you come from many different like religious backgrounds, there's these kind of like, you know, these demonic characters that, that are, are, are you know, that, that rise out of that reality model. Something that I remember from, from Seth Speaks, which is the, the first book in this series, was that he talks about all the different layers of reality being vibrations. Mm. And that the reason why we experience the reality that, that we do in this moment is because we're tuned into that vibration, like a radio, I assume. Uh, and that, that really blew my mind. What would you say is like the most far out thing that you've, that you've read from that book that was maybe hard to wrap your mind around or for, from the series? Right. Sure. You know, um, that, we are multi-dimensional beings that are radiating all of our lives simultaneously mm. with all space and time being foundational to that. And this, you know, the ego personality thinks that this is all that there is, you know, that we're, you know, we're this one life, <laughs> traveling through this thing and this is this is ourself we're our bodies primarily and that is like like just a, like one aspect of our entire being mm-hmm. and we have access to that 
you know, this, this seemingly individual self has access to that, that larger being. Um, but because of the nature of consciousness and the power that it's bestowed with, we can lock ourselves out of, you know, we can temporarily lock ourselves out of that access just by the very nature of our own beliefs. Wow. So along those lines, <laughs> then it kind of, um, it would go against the idea of reincarnation where we have sequential lives because all of the lives are being experienced simultaneously. Right. So it doesn't necessarily go against like the like reincarnation entirely, but to think that chronologically mm. <laughs> that we're going through all this, you know, um, in some sort of like forward trajectory of time, that's that is actually part and parcel to curtain to current beliefs mm. in the language and vernacular surrounding time that causes us to perceive it that way okay so reincarnation definitely it it takes place but it's 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 still done from from um um it's not done from like a chronological type of order it's it's really it's 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 done from outside of time space you know, it's, it's, it's all of everything that we're doing inside of time space or in three dimensional reality is actually being brought down from, um, from outside of time space or like the quantum realm and the thought form. And then it like collapses from that, from that wave into a particle and then it's physically expressed. And, you know, by the very nature of, of physical reality, we can develop these beliefs about it that will cause us to think or to perceive time in all sorts of ways times and space in all sorts of ways that will cause us to think that something that all of this happens chronologically and it and it, and it doesn't what that means then is if if you were able to if you had the skill then you could ascend from your individual perspective to the higher what do you call like a oversoul or or the higher conscious self sure yeah yeah, you did too. So Seth, what's really funny about Seth is he can like, he can use these kind of terms. What he does is first off, like it's, it's, he's using normal words for the most part, but he changes the way in which, you know, he, he, he structures sentences and then like the way in which he orders certain words together that literally it's like a code that opens, that opens you up to these insights, you know, like as you're reading them, you'll feel your consciousness expand. So like the main thing that he's really trying to do is to expand our definition of the self or our beliefs about what the self is so much to the extent that it just naturally happens that you begin to experience, you know, the greater entity that is you or that, you know, your, your soul, if you want to say it that way. Um, and he actually gives these very like kind of practical, this kind of practical advice, but he does refer to like this being like framework one. <laughs> and then like kind of like outside of time space is like framework two. And so like what he does is like, basically is like re redefine certain terms and then starts to use them very precisely for, you know, to help you, to help us contemplate these kind of things from inside of here mm -hmm. and then start getting like just, just small access, like baby step access towards experiencing your, your, you know, what it is is he's trying to demonstrate is like the limitless landscape of the psyche, which is you. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that goes back to your self-evident question, because as I'm reading these things, as I read this information and these insights and everything that Seth is trying to convey, I will have these, sometimes we'll have these simultaneous experiences where I will feel, I would literally, I will, it literally, there will be this feeling where I have like a sense of expansion and then mm -hmm. all these really you know, when I first started off in, in reading the nature of personal reality, which is the one I, in hindsight, I would recommend first to add to everyone. Seth speaks is amazing too, but the nature, something about the nature of personal reality is so, um, uh, per, like very, like very practical, tangible, like kind of rubber meets the road, mm. um, things that he's trying to convey there. But when that, when I started, when I read that book, like the level of synchronicities and kind of psychic psychic experience experiences that i was having was it was it was overwhelming how 
there was just certain things that happened that I was like, that is just, that's ridiculous, you know? And, like, and then you're kind of like, you know, it's like that moment, like where you never like watch the never ending story and the kid's like reading the book and the next thing you know, he's like, he's in it. <laughs> like yeah. that feeling, you're just like, this is, you know, like you, you, in some regards, you're like, I can't believe what I'm going through right now as a result of like reading this material. Mm -hmm. the, like the dreams change, everything changed. So like, yes, yeah. self-evident, you know, in real time. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's interesting. So it's, it's <laughs> less about educating people than it is about kind of subtly easing someone's mind open so that they can see mm -hmm. it for themselves. Right. So they can sense the enormity yeah. of their own, you know, the enormity and the vitality of their own being. Wow. And, you know, the, you know, really do take kind of take a little bit of like a wrecking ball to this, like these old, this old reality model that's not working anymore. It was fine for a while. It was a, you know, it was a great stepping stone in consciousness, but mm -hmm. that's the thing is like, this is never, it, it, it never stays the same. It's always seeking to expand and to mm -hmm. continue to create and to continue to understand all that it is. So, yeah all of a sudden you gotta like you know it's kind of like you gotta you gotta you gotta take the old you gotta slough off the old skin kind of thing okay so the original book or the first one was set speaks and then there's the second one that you mentioned which was the personality the nature, personal, yeah the nature of personal reality and then so, so is is the set personality still being channeled like or, or is the or is the message complete at this point um well what's really interesting is jane died of rheumatoid arth rheumatoid arthritis while the book the way towards health was being written <laughs> oh and it clearly documents it, it does a great job describing as to like why jane was not ever able, able to overcome her illness in the book it's amazing huh um <clears throat> but anyways uh no, I, I would say that that Seth has a lot more to say, or would have said a lot more. Um, but that's the thing, though, is is like we're not, and that that's the other thing that like like Seth illustrates is how the reason why Jane had access to him is because he was an aspect of her, or they were aspects of their greater entity, you know. So if Seth was going to come through another person, it would be because they have their, that psychic bond. Oh, so it's not just anybody who does no. channel your mediumship can just tap in. They have to be somebody who's actually connected. Right. Them. Yeah. And if somebody, if Seth did come through someone again, it would be very obvious. There's people who's, who have said that, yes, yeah, I speak, you know, Seth's come through me. And if you listen to what, you're, what they're saying, you're like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you might want to like kind of tune the dial a little bit or something because it's there's a lot of static going on there. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what he said. I mean, it's it's six thousand pages of dictation from like nineteen sixty two to nineteen eighty four. I mean, it's rather extensive. But you know, Seth will often even talk about how there's like Seth two and Seth three, where they're literally like in our terms, future aspects of Seth or future, like even, you know, ones where like wow. literally like what, what Jane is to Seth, the Seth two and Seth three are to, to Seth. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Huh. And they've got, some and they, they come through, they have some, and it's different when they come through. It's, it's way more like kind of like distilled and, and base, very based, very like, huh. Like all the extra words are cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Still, still watertight in what they're saying. You're just like, that's mm -hmm. wow. You know, you don't, there's, there's just, there's this like, complete way of expressing things where you just, you're not left to like find holes in it really. <clears throat> so, so while there's no, there's no new material being generated, there's, there's an ongoing study of, mm -hmm. of material that, that was originally produced yeah absolutely i mean it's voluminous i've read i read all the books that that seth wrote but then in addition to that there's all like the the early years the early session classes where they would have like esp classes where jane's trying to teach people to begin to 
to use and that and that's the other thing too it's like one of the things that, that like seth is like saying like the only thing that one of the main things we ask of you is to use your abilities of consciousness and there are no limitations and that that and there are no limitations to the self or there literally are no limitations to the abilities of consciousness so that's what you know early on jane was doing these esp classes to help people develop their abilities to astral travel to um have premonitions to have like psychic experiences you know cut down those barriers of that like the illusion of time whereas if all space and time is simultaneous then you actually do have access to the future and you have access to the past and you know in a different way than what we tend to how we tend to normally think of it um yeah no it's the 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 amount of direction and different kind of even exercises that like seth gave <laughs> throughout the whole experience, along with Jane being like one of the world's greatest mystics probably that we've seen in a really long time, conducting her own classes and trying to help people just on her own gain access to this. Like it, it's so voluminous and endless that, that like what was given is, it's it's a matter of lifetimes and, tr and trying to really, you, know, you can just, you can keep taking it further and further and further. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's been fascinating. I really appreciate you uh, enlightening us with all this information. Yeah, thanks for having me. And um, I will link the the books that you that you mentioned below. Um, thanks for watching.